Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. Yes, my fiance is doing well. She did have her gallbladder removed late last night. For those that are keeping up with that story, everything's going well. She's obviously sore and has some shoulder pain and some other stuff going on, but she'll be fine. She's doing good. She's upstairs resting right now. But today, I want to talk to you about a few stories. We got three things we're going to talk about in this video. So buckle up. It's going to be a bit of a longer video than my recent ones that have been on the shorter side. Uh, but that's because this is some really, really cool stuff, including a big event happening tomorrow. Uh, we got a new game, uh, a leak that got confirmed officially as coming to Switch next month. Uh, and something really cool about Breath of the Wild that makes us just dream about the possibilities of a future Nintendo platform. Uh, but before we get into that, I want to remind you, we are giving away a Switch OLED system. That's right, we're giving away the white one that, to me, is personally themed after Metroid Dread. I know that's not an official statement, but gosh, does it look like it is. And it releases on the same day as Metroid Dread, so I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. It kind of feels like it's a Metroid-themed uh, Switch. But that being said, we are giving away one of those to enter. All you have to do is be subscribed. That's it. There's no other special requirements or anything. Just be subscribed. All right, folks, let's just hop right into it because this first story is something that we will be live streaming tomorrow. Uh, in case you haven't heard the news, a new indie world is coming tomorrow. Now, this is not surprising. They traditionally have done indie worlds usually in the month of August. Uh, and yeah, people that were saying we were going to get Nintendo Directs in September did say, uh, you know, the person I'm talking about here is Samus Hunter, by the way, uh, said that we would get an Indie World this month and get a Nintendo Direct next month. Well, here we are with an Indie World. Now, again, it's a rather safe uh, prediction or safe statement because we traditionally get Indie Worlds in uh, August and then get uh, Nintendo Directs in September. Even last year that was true, although it was not like a normal standard Nintendo Direct. Uh, either way, we have an Indie World coming up, and it's going to be 20 minutes long. So again, the Indie World happens tomorrow, and it's happening at 9 a.m. Pacific, or for me, 11 a.m. Central. So I will be live streaming that for you guys. We'll have a nice uh, run-up to that stream uh, about potential games you might see. There's a certain Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game I'm hoping shows up there. Obviously, we keep holding out hope for the new Hollow Knight, the Silk Song game. We keep holding out hope we're finally going to see that. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll have to wait and see. And I'll come up with a list tomorrow uh, in the pre-show to let you guys know my thoughts on that. So yeah, that's really cool, and I'm super excited uh, for that indie world. Uh, lots of stuff we hope we hope to see. Obviously, there's always the potential No More Heroes 3 is there, although we've been getting a trickle of trailers and information about that game already. Uh, there'll obviously be some new announcements. Pretty much every indie world tends to contain a lot of really high-quality indie games, hence the whole purpose of having that showcase. So uh, I really look forward to seeing what new stuff is coming to Switch from the world of the small independent game developers. So next up, we're talking about Breath of the Freaking Wild. And why are we talking about Breath of the Wild? Not, you, oh yeah, you're talking about the sequel, right? No, no, no. I wish we had news on that to talk about. But I'm actually talking about the uh, original Breath of the Wild because a modder has done something that we haven't really seen done successfully uh, to date. And now we know why we haven't seen it done successfully. And that is running Breath of the Wild in 8K 60 FPS with ray tracing. Now you might go, who really cares, right? They're obviously uh, playing a ROM, they're using an emulator, all that jazz. And yeah, they need some pretty beefy hardware to do this. They're using an Asus Tough RTX 3090, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM of Corsair Vengeance at 3200 megahertz, a Ryzen 9 3900X, which is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU, running at 4.5 gigahertz on all cores, uh, using a two terabyte SSD, which yeah, I'm not sure the exact speed of the SSD, but the point is the SSD, I don't think has much to do with it. It's usually the CPU that has a lot to do with getting that consistent frame rates, but running this at 8K 60 FPS, which I, I, I'm not doing for this video. You're, you can take a, I mean, you're looking at it right now and all you're seeing is 4K 60 because I, I can't, I, I don't have an 8K monitor here. So no point in me putting 8K footage uh, in the show, but um, yeah, you can go to, uh, to the link down uh, below. I'll, I'll, I'll mark it in the source section in the description so you guys can go check it out in 8K if you just happen to have an 8K capable device. I don't know too many people that have even 8K displays to take advantage of that, but uh, it, dude, it looks really, really good. Obviously, we've seen uh, Breath of the Wild with ray tracing before. We just haven't seen that at 8K 60 FPS. And it, it obviously makes you wonder about the future of Nintendo and like 
this game, but you know, in the way that this looks, potentially looks better than uh, Breath of the Wild 2. And it just makes you wonder for future Nintendo Switch hardware. Not so much the 8K aspect. I think we're a long ways away from 8K displays becoming the standard. Like, to, you know, it could be 20 years before it becomes standard. 4K is literally just becoming standard. Uh, and so 8K, I still feel, is a couple decades away before we get to that being the standard panel out there and being affordable. But it is really, really cool, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I, I think it looks great. I, I think this does make me dream of what future Nintendo hardware is capable of. Again, not so much the 8K, but obviously the 60 FPS. Obviously, the potential for ray tracing on a new generation Switch. I, I think there's just some exciting prospects here. Uh, when you think about, hey, what about bringing Breath of the Wild or Breath of the Wild 2 or Mario Odyssey or some of these other games over to Nintendo's next-gen platform in a, a kind of souped-up kind of way like we're seeing with Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 what's happening. So uh, it would be really cool if Nintendo decides to do that versus going, you know, that, by the way, this would mean the next Switch or the next Nintendo platform is full backwards compatibility which that's you know something we have to hope for first. But still, I think this is a really cool thing, and I hope to see it expanded upon uh, in the future. Uh, again, you're seeing the footage for yourself. It looks great, and I, I'm just really excited for uh, what this shows for the possibility of future hardware and Nintendo. Now, this last story is one that I am personally excited about, uh, and that is Dark Siders. So it was actually originally rumored over the weekend and sort of leaked out there, but the official Twitter account for Darksiders has come on and confirmed that Darksiders 3 is coming to Nintendo Switch next month on September 30th, so really soon, uh, and it includes... Both DLCs currently available for the game in Keepers of the Void and The Crucible. Uh, so those will be packed in. I'm pretty sure it's going to launch at 60 bucks. They didn't give us any pricing details. They didn't give us any technical details. 60 FPS, 30 FPS. Probably going to run at 30 FPS because the game itself has struggled on even like base PlayStation 4s and Xboxes. Uh, some people even had issues with it on PlayStation 4 Pro. Uh, so it, 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 it's traditionally known as a rather demanding game. And if you're fans of the other Darksider games, which are already available on Switch and were on Wii U, um, this obviously completes that trilogy. Uh, this game is more like Dark Souls um, than I'd say the previous two entries. Uh, but that, that's obviously just my personal take uh, based on my experience with all three games. Um, it, it does feel more like a Dark Souls game, but that doesn't make it a bad thing. Dark Souls is one of the most critically acclaimed games out there. So, uh, Dark, you know, Darksiders 3 is a lot of fun, and I'm just glad to see third-party support continuing to come to Switch. Now, again, this thing, game's already available everywhere else, so if you don't want to wait for it and you have other hardware to play it on, I mean, go play it. It's just a reminder it's available. Uh, but it is coming to Switch, and that, to me, is always exciting exciting to see third-party support come to Switch. Even if, personally, I'm probably not that interested in this game on Switch because I've already beaten it, but um, it, it is cool that it's coming, and I'm, I'm pretty happy for those of you guys that don't have it yet. Now, for our last story, we're going to end with a little bit of an update, a sales update on this platform because there's actually been quite a few digital sales happening for Nintendo Switch, some rather big ones. I don't know if you guys have been on the eShop lately, but there has been a mountain of games discounted, including Nintendo first-party games. I think I even saw Breath of the Wild digitally available for $45 like last week. So there's been a lot of massive sales hitting the platform, which to me is good. Uh, I, I'm not going to put them on the level of, say, Steam sales, uh, but they're still it's still really good to see some actual digital discounts on major games. And today we have the announcement of some brand new discounts that are beginning later this month. It's going to be available only, it appears, for, gosh, less than 24 hours. So you can have a very small period here. And that is discounts on Bethesda games on Switch. Uh, now, I've actually played, I think, every single one of these games on Switch, and all of them uh, were really good. Some of them have various versions, uh, but the point is, is that Bethesda's entire lineup on Switch is going to be on sale for roughly 15 hours. Um, so let's let's go over the lineup. So um, Doom itself, Doom, the 2016 Doom, uh, is going to be on sale for $29.99. Was, uh, it was $39.99. Uh, before this sale. Doom Eternal, just the base game, is on sale for $29.99, which is half off its current price on the eShop of $59.99. Doom Eternal, the Ancient Gods expansion pack, is going to be down to $22.49, which is down from its $29.99 original price point. Doom Eternal Deluxe Edition, which will include everything, is going to be $53.98. That was a 
originally $89.99. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is finally on sale uh, for $29.99. Still listed at $59.99. I mean, imagine, that game's been around how many platforms, how many console decades? It's, wow. Um, Wolfenstein Youngblood is going to be $5.99. That's right, just $6. That game is really good. If you like Wolfenstein and haven't played Youngblood yet, for six bucks, you better be picking this thing up. Um, it is tw- it's nineteen ninety nine right now on the on the eShop. Uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood Deluxe Edition is going to be fourteen ninety nine, down from its twenty nine ninety nine price point. And then Wolfenstein Two, the new Colossus, is going to be seventeen ninety nine instead of the usual fifty nine ninety nine. That's the biggest discount of all of them, over fifty percent discount. Um, this sale is going to be taking place starting on August twenty third at eleven fifty nine. Uh, p.m. Pacific time, or in, in my time, that would be 1.59 p.m. Pacific time, and ending um, August 24th at 2.59 a.m., or in my case, that would be 4.59 a.m., so basically 5 a.m. So, it's, again, it's about a 14, 15-hour sale that's happening during QuakeCon. Uh, really, really cool, really, really good stuff. Um, makes me really excited um, to see what other companies are going to start dropping major sales on switch obviously uh, this is also a reminder that we might never get bethesda games again on switch because now it's microsoft owned one of the pitfalls of microsoft's purchase of zenimax studios is that we probably are done getting these games or maybe we're not because microsoft and nintendo are like buddy buddy and they're going to be like yeah no we're going to keep bringing those games over uh we'll see what happens but i'm really excited about um the sale i'm excited about this news in general today guys we have an indie world tomorrow and that's always great it's like it's not a nintendo direct but indie games matter too seriously i know i don't play enough of them and i should be playing more indie games than i do but for real like that's awesome that's exciting stuff we had a lot of big stories today i hope you guys enjoy uh all that news um kind of a nice little four pack for you guys today um, I am Nathaniel Rebeljantz from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, drop a comment. That helps get the video uh, spread out to more people. And I will catch each and every single one of you in the next video. For sure, we'll be live streaming tomorrow. We'll see if we end up live streaming again today. We also have the podcast tomorrow. So a lot of stuff to look forward to this week as we keep pushing forward and keep pushing onward into a new tomorrow. Tomorrow.